Now we're going to talk about meal, snack, and timing. We're going to answer the question, when should you eat? So let's talk about meal timing before a game or practice. And this is something that I want you guys to think about in terms of like a big triangle. You can see that here. And you see that the base of this is a lot fatter on the left and smaller on the right. And so what that symbolizes is that the further out from your training or from the game, let's say if it's you know three or four hours before, that's going to be a large meal. It's going to be a full meal like what you would normally eat for dinner. You're going to follow the hard training plate and uh, we've gone over that but I'll, I'll show you another example of that here in a bit. And you also want to be sure that you're including fluids. Now, if you don't get a chance to eat three or four hours before and your only opportunity is to eat one or two hours before, let's say that you have practice at two and lunch at one, you may want to consider eating a big snack. You know what happens when you eat a very, very big meal right before you exercise. It can give you indigestion, or you can throw it up, I mean, it may not end well for you. But most people can tolerate a big snack one to two hours before. We want to pick mostly high carbohydrate foods because you're about to use that for energy. And of course, be sure to include fluids. And then finally, if in either situation, A, you forgot to eat, which I hope doesn't happen, or B, maybe you ate three to four hours before, but now some of that food energy ran out and you want a little snack before practice. In either of those scenarios, it's perfectly okay to eat right before training, practice, or a game. You wanna eat something smaller so that you can digest it and handle it. Once again, be sure to include fluids and maybe caffeine. Now you might wanna have a cup of coffee, but we'll talk about that in another session. So guys, I want you guys to hold off on that for now. So as you can see that the further out you are, the bigger your meal size as you get closer and closer to a game or practice, it's gonna be smaller. And that's so you don't throw it up on the court. <laughs> I hope that just makes sense. And the closer you get to the game or practice, whatever you know, hard exercise you're about to do, you want a higher percentage of that to be carbohydrates. So maybe for your three to four hour meal, you might have half a plate of carbohydrates and your protein and you know, we'll, we'll look at what that looks like. But if it's going to be right before, then you're gonna to wanna to have something that is almost all carbohydrates, maybe even something a little sugary because it's digested faster. So I hope that makes sense when we're talking about meal timing. But please, please, please do not be in the boat of the athlete who doesn't eat at all before training or practice and you just lose out on that benefit to get lots of energy. All right, so once again, here's your example of what to eat for before a game. This is what your plate's gonna look like. Half your plate's gonna be carbohydrates. A quarter of your plate is protein and maybe a scoop of green beans or some fruit or other vegetable on there. With your meal, I normally recommend water, but if you find yourself the type of athlete who gets kind of a smaller appetite before a game because you get nervous or your stomach gets kind of upset, you could consider having something like juice, Gatorade or, or um, like a sweet tea or something to give you a little bit extra calories because maybe your appetite isn't as big as it normally is. And then optionally, I guess, well, optional, would be if you're in the same sort of category. Let's say that um, you just really, really have a hard time eating a normal meal before a game. You can include some sweets in there as well. Or maybe if your meal was small, you didn't feel like you ate enough, you can have a scoop of ice cream or um, a serving of something like a candy, something small would be okay. Try not to um, you know, make this like a really big thing. I wouldn't order like a whole dessert at a restaurant, but you know, if they serve it with a cookie or something like that, then that would be all right. All right, so here's just some examples so that you can see some things to eat right before practice during halftime 
and after training. These are all very, very important times to get in some nutrition. So remember back on that slide we were just on uh, about how, you know, how far out you want to eat before training or whatever. We looked at the one where it was just an hour, 30, 60 minutes before practice. So here's some of those really high carbohydrate ideas. It could be something like peanut butter crackers, maybe fruit and trail mix. It could be a bowl of cereal or even a PBJ sandwich. All of those are good options about an hour before practice or a game. Now, during halftime or an hour after practice, let's say you're doing a two hour long practice or during halftime during a game, you wanna recharge your energy. So you're gonna consume something that is sugary, something maybe like Fig Newtons, or this is where you start drinking Gatorade, right, after that first hour of training. Uh, something like bananas can be really good, and you can see here that we do the applesauce squeeze packs. A lot of our athletes like those. But think something sugary and quick and easy to digest. Any of those options are good here, or you can choose one of your own. And after training, we want to rebuild that muscle, start getting in some protein. Aim for at least 30 grams of protein if you can, but something like a protein shake with a piece of fruit, maybe beef jerky with that PBJ again, or a Greek yogurt can all help you get the amount of protein that you need to start rebuilding your muscle. Let's talk about some more important guidelines for pregame nutrition. These are things that, just some tips I'm gonna give you all. First, no new foods before a game. You wanna try anything new in a game that didn't work during practice. The same thing works with food. Make sure you've tried it during training at least two or three times. You can have a predictable outcome. That goes for supplements, goes for fluids, any kind of food. Try to make it something familiar before a game and you're gonna be just fine. Second, eating is a skill. It is something that is sometimes a chore. It's something that is sometimes pleasurable. But practice makes perfect. And if you never practice eating a snack before practice, then when it comes time before a game and you need that extra pick-me-up, I mean, you're just not gonna have the same sort of skill as if you'd been trying something all semester long. And the other thing I want to talk about is eating for performance versus eating for pleasure. We do want to make sure that things are balanced and that, sorry, you want to keep things balanced and make sure that, you know, you're not being a robot or giving yourself an eating disorder because you're trying to make everything that you eat perfectly. But if you find yourself like you just don't want to eat before practice because it's an inconvenience or you don't want to go eat right after your training because you know you have something else that you want to do i mean you really need to consider that in order for you to improve as an athlete and in order for you to make the contribution that you need to your team that you need to do your part both on the court and off the court and eating is one of those responsibilities um, so, like I said, we don't want to go crazy with this, but you do want to push harder than your opponents and you do want to use this competitive advantage of having a dietitian working with you guys over the off season. So I hope that we take advantage of that. And then finally, number three, have a game plan. So have a snack list, prepack your food. I know that coach is probably going to take care of a lot of that for you when you're on the road. But that doesn't mean that you can't have something in your gym bag or in your locker or in your dorm to help you to overcome those times when maybe you weren't as prepared as you thought you would be. So those three guidelines, no new foods, eating is a skill and have a game plan are gonna put you in the right situation for making progress with your nutrition. Finally, we're gonna talk about hydration fundamentals on this slide. This is a urine chart. So basically, as you might infer, if your pee is a light yellow, as you can see up here at the top, you're hydrated, really in these top three. Um, basically, you're just going to look in the toilet and make sure that you're hydrated. But as you can see, as things get darker, you get more dehydrated. And what I want you to do is to sip on water throughout the day or whatever fluid you're having 
and make sure that you're somewhere closer to the top. Okay, so sip on fluids throughout the day, drink fluids anytime you eat a meal or a snack. So if you're having a snack, just like we talked about, drink something with that. And I want you to spend some extra energy into hydrating immediately before and after practice. Okay, next thing is salt your food. Athletes don't need to avoid salt. Salt is an e essential electrolyte. So if you enjoy salty foods, go ahead and go for it. As long as you're exercising throughout the week, it's going to be okay. Excellent sources of electrolytes include mixed nuts, any kind of salty food or salting your food at the table, orange juice, fruit, and dairy. And finally, I'm going to give you a metric here to tell if you're staying hydrated enough. If you lose over 2% of your body weight during practice, your performance has been suffering. So I have a little chart here. You can see for an athlete that weighs 120 pounds, if you lose over two and a half pounds at the gym or after practice, then you got dehydrated at some point. At 180 pounds, that would be over a three and a half pound loss. So pay attention to your weight fluctuations before and after practice, training, whatever you have going on. And that's going to be another thing along with the color of your urine or just knowing that you're following good hydration patterns to make sure that you're in the right spot. And here's three um, examples or suggestions on how to stay hydrated. So first is always have water with you. It's easy to drink when it's convenient. So bring a refillable water to school, a, uh, like a water jug or a Nalgene bottle. And if you're at home, keep your cup filled up. My second tip is that eight to 12 ounces of water. So that's about a half a bottle of water to a bottle of water for like, you know, one of those disposable bottles or a cup to a cup and a half. I want you to have that in about an hour before practice, even if you're not thirsty. Now, if you've been sipping on water throughout the day, that's different. But if you normally don't drink, at the very least, an hour before practice, have yourself a bottle of water and get those fluids topped off. And then finally, number three is that Gatorade is for training. Gatorade is high in sugar and it has a very, very special role that it plays for athletes that are already in the middle of activity. So if your training is going to be for an hour or less, which it usually never is, then you're gonna just have water the entire time. If you're going for longer than an hour, in that second hour or starting at halftime, I want you to start consuming Gatorade so that you can get that sugar into your system and those electrolytes into your system to help you push harder for whatever sustained activity that you're doing. The only caveat to this, or I, I suppose exception, is that if you're drinking water and you make time for a snack and actually during halftime, maybe you eat a banana or a bag of pretzels or something like that, then you're gonna be able to get that same benefit. So it doesn't have to come from a sports drink, but it can and it may be convenient. That's just for your consideration. Now we're gonna do an activity where we're going to figure out what you are gonna have right before practice, during your halftime breaks, and then after training. So figure out what is your powerful jet fuel before practice? What do you need to recharge your energy during halftime breaks? Something sugary and salty, I hope. And what are you gonna aim for right after training to start feeding your muscles? So. You have four spots here, put at least two in each situation, and now you have a game plan for your snack. But we're not done. We also need to include whatever your fluid is going to be. So whether that be water, Gatorade, go ahead and put it down. And now you have a game plan for building peak performance around training. And what you're gonna notice is that you're gonna be able to train harder, you're gonna recover faster, and you're gonna get better results in your athletic endeavors. So now I'm gonna open it up for questions. If you have any about anything that we've covered or anything beyond that for sports nutrition, just reach out to me on the app and I'll be happy to get back in touch with you 
or if we're in class or working together, you can also grab me then.